We'll get started. I'll call the meeting's orders. And we're looking, I'm looking at the agenda. So um, we'll do the minutes, approval of the minutes. If I could have a motion from a member of the board to approve the minutes from our last meeting. I'll make that motion. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So then all in favor, aye. 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 Great. Okay. Here we go. Old business. We're going to talk about the overtime policy resolution and um, the board. We have comments from Laura. Oh. Or some suggested changes. Would you like me to speak to them? Um, I was going to just go down the copy that you sent me mm -hmm. and go through them rather quickly. Yeah, because okay? there's only like three little. Yeah, I think they're mostly punctuation. Yeah, they're Scribner. And um, so let's get our overtime resolution in front of us. Where's that? There's tender. Oh, great. Hey, Kendra. Oh. Door slots. Yeah, it always thought it's badged. <laughs> I know I've got that here somewhere. <laughs> Laura, why don't you go ahead? Okay. Don't hold the smooth up here. Okay, I know I've got this. So we're looking at the overtime resolution, and Laura provided some corrections or some addition solutions. Um, yeah, the, the the email that I sent after I read what was presented to us, um, you know, for the the board packet um, on the second page of the resolution, section one. Uh, hours of work and leave is no longer Article 5, it's Article 4. I've got it. Sorry about that. Would you like to go ahead then? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so just simply Article 5 is now 4, so that would be in the Section 1 area. And then, of course, the title, again, would be Article 4, Hours of Work and Leave. Um, then down under, so it would be now Article 4, Q2, that should be A, not B. Because you're asking us in Section 1 to, you know, look at 2A, but then when you go down here, it's 2B. And then the other simple one is down in Section 2, Article 6 is now 5 in two spots down there. That's all I have at this time. Okay. Other members of the board, what comments, questions? Concerns, differences of opinion, the jokes about the overtime research. Ron, anything? Well, you know, I've been I have the Fair Labor Standards Act and and I think that's what we're governed by. And uh, again, I th I think that should be the uh, the, the basis of a personnel policy. I realize that, you know, what, 80% of the employees are covered by collective bargaining agreements. And, you know, it may go further than what is covered by the Fair Labor Standards Act. So, you know, that's, that's a subject of collective bargaining. That's something we're not even involved in. We don't want to be involved in. Uh, we're going to let the unions take care of that. Let the city administration take care of that. That's totally outside our prerogative. So I think it's important that we adopt a good, sound overtime policy. And I think what was presented to us at the last meeting seems to get us to that point. Uh, I really do believe in compromise. And the city apparently has included <laughs> holidays which are not required to be covered by the Fair Labor Standards Act. And so I would agree with 
the addition of holidays. The only thing I would probably add to that would be some wording having to do with um, uh, workers' compensation. And I'm not sure how the city handles workers' comp, but if somebody's hurt on the job uh, and has to take a day or two off through workers' comp, I think that fairly should be included in in an overtime policy. And so I look on that as a compromise where we add workers' comp hours and uh, and holiday hours to what is covered by the Fair Labor Standards Act. <laughs> And uh, so that's that, that's my initial uh, response after our public hearing that we had a few weeks ago. Hi. Go ahead. So, no, go ahead. I was going to say under a work-related injury, if there's work time lost, are they not being paid? Well, I, I did talk to our work comp. Uh, we're not opposed to that, but there's a lot of nuances to work comp, whether they're like duty, whether they're totally disabled. Um, many work comp claims get litigated. So, you know, I, I think we need to be careful about that language. We do have work comp policies, so um, we're not opposed to it, but we, we really kind of need to nuance that against the benefits that they actually get and and what that would look like. Do, do you get money for workers' comp and then you make up the difference? The, I know that's what we did the, at, at the hospital. Employee the does. We don't get it. The employee gets paid. It, it, and it depends. It depends on what type of work comp they're on. And and what's what is the difference? If somebody's well if they're if, on if light you have duty, a chemical let's, exposure let's say they're example. on light duty work comp. I'm sorry. If they're on light duty that they're okay. actually working. So, okay. um, but they're they're restricted to what they can do on light duty. If they're totally disabled, like TPD, then they're not working and they're getting partial work comp, you know, and then the city. So there's several different scenarios that can play out through work comp. But what if, what if a fireman or a police officer or a utility worker is injured on the job, they can't perform the essential duties of their of their work what would happen would they be when you say light duty would they work in the office mm -hmm. or would they if they could do light duty yes and and would they get full pay for yes. the for their primary job yes okay yeah and and alternatives from that would be if they can't work at all if they well, let's got say, really hurt and they were in the hospital or something and they, you know, there was no working. Okay. So in other words, they have to stay home and would they get their full wages or yes. would they yes. get a workers' cop check yes. supplemented by the yeah. city? Yes. Supplemented by the city? Yes. They get, it equals their whole pay. Okay. So my feeling is that should not be held against an employee if they legitimately have a workers' cop claim. And they're injured on the on the on on duty. It seems to me that that would be fair to figure in their base. So, in other words, if the, if they're on workers' comp Monday and Tuesday, and then they come back to work later on. Uh, it seems to be, you know, those hours, those initial sixteen hours, were for fire and 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 the ten hour people, whatever whatever is computation there. So, yeah. That's answers. When you say it's submitted by the city, is the employee using pay time or uh, pay time? No, it's just supplemented. Correct. So there's no deduction from benefit hours. No. Okay. If it's if it is work comp and it's compensable, then they do mm -hmm. not lose any of their accrued time. They don't lose any of their, you know, they don't use their own sick leave. Very generous. Again, <laughs> well, I mean, work comp is, <laughs> is it's a statute as well. I mean, but I do think we have a great. I mean, we do have a good work comp. Nope, they don't lose anything. I mean, but we have. I mean, work comp is very complicated. We have some very complicated cases. We have cases that that last months, years. Yeah, 
that get litigated, that get settled, that get, I mean, yeah. it's not, it's not as easy as saying, oh, I cut my hand at work, so I'm off for a couple of days. Those are easy ones. Some are not nearly that, many right. are not nearly that easy. Right. I'm not so sure, Ron, if we should or could include those hours in the calculation of work time. Other comments about that? I don't have any comments about the overtime part. When he brought up workman's comp, because our firemen and, and our police officers and everybody else that works for the city, that work with the public, they're exposed to COVID, and that should be covered under comp, under, under comp. That shouldn't be, they shouldn't have to take, you know, use their daily vacations or whatever, your PTOs, to cover that. That should be covered by comprehensive, by their comprehensive. Okay, we're not talking about workers' compensation, right? All right. <laughs> All right. I mean, that... Again, workers' compensation is a very complicated, right. and I we're not that so, we're not debating that right now. Okay. Yeah. And if the this board ever wants to get a summary on our program, we can we can provide you all a summary and how it works at some point in time. But again, we're we are getting a little sidetracked here. Okay. Um, you know, if I may, from a staff perspective, anytime you carve start carving things out of a policy or you start making exceptions, it becomes less effective. OK, so from our perspective, we can certainly look at how work comp can factor into this policy at some point in time, but I don't recommend it. I and, and I don't think, you know, now is the time to go down that road. If we want to investigate that later, the majority of the folks here want us to do that fine. But the more you carve things out, make exceptions. Yeah, I uh, the more challenging a policy is, you know, we think it's pretty straightforward. Um, we're we're making some exceptions for holidays, um, yeah. which is uh, more than a lot of cities do yes. around here. So, um, yeah, I I would oppose adding mm -hmm. workers' comp to the overtime. It, it it has a complicated, very complicated uh, matter to what can be a pretty straightforward unnecessary. Policy. Yeah. And I mean, when the cases, when there are more serious cases, they get settled and they get they get a benefit anyway. Yeah, I mean, you know what I mean. They mm -hmm. get. So I I would I would not like to see workers comp specifically mentioned in here. We can definitely look at the program and show it to you guys, and then we can talk about how it works. We have a policy. Yeah, I know. It talks about the state statute. Yeah. Well, I'm not. I'm yeah. not really adver uh, advocating it. I'm just saying maybe we ought to think about that. Yeah. Be because again, like holidays, if the city declares a holiday, the employee doesn't have a an opportunity to have that excluded. And by the same token, workers' comp would be, I think, a, a very similar kind of situation. But uh, I'm not going to yeah. make a big deal out of it. I okay. just more okay. of a question. Oh, yeah. really. Okay, we can move on then. Okay. Okay, Laura, did you have something? Yes, I do. Sorry, let me make a note. Um, on uh, section, as they kind of mirror each other, I think it's actually easier to probably look under what now is Article Five B Six Overtime, which would be the last page. Yeah. Or maybe there's another page for the finding, but yeah, the second to last page. Um, based on the uh, robust discussion we had during the public hearing a couple of well a month ago now. Um, I believe that we should consider those things that were brought up by them. Um, things that are again covered by um, collective bargaining agreements that that my understanding is everyone has agreed to that they will of course as always negotiate when they are time for, to do that type of thing. Um, so I am uh, going to make a recommendation to remove some language um, that would discuss um, those things that would be covered in a, not, in a bargaining agreement and are currently, all, everybody's functioning under their current agreement. So on 6A, I would actually, I would put a stat on unless otherwise provided by separate work agreement. Um, I would leave that in. And then 
in the second sentence, all the items that are, I think it's double underlined there, I would move to strike those items because they refer to contracts. Um, uh, and then uh, under where, where we talk about holidays, and I apologize, I think that's more so in, oh no, it is here too. Um, after holidays, I just would add, uh, as defined by Article 4, Section C of this document, just so there's not a question of whose holidays. It's not capitalized as holidays, which are defined somewhere, but so that someone doesn't think there's another type of holiday, although that is nothing to hang, you know, hang this up, but just thought that would be something that would be helpful. And then I would also propose that uh, there be a section in, that says at the end, um, which is in the pre is in the QA section, but is not in the six section, it looks like, which is all other overtime hours are excluded unless the department director specifically approves additional hours be included. And the reason I suggest that is because, for instance, the uh, situation with dispatcher Hayes, who um, is non-exempt and she uh, is not covered by a bargaining agreement. Therefore, if she took off of a week of work um, for vacation and then was called in on a Saturday because of a shortage of staff on the floor, um, that she'd be paid time and a half for that. Um, and then, then that would be at the decision of her department director um, or supervisor, whatever that word maybe should be. Um, the city is extremely understaffed in the police department, the fire, uh, maybe not as understaffed in fire, but is understaffed in fire and very, very understaffed in dispatch. Um, and I see no reason that we should punish someone who knows they need to come in and serve the community to answer the 911 calls, um, who's been off on a week of vacation, and now we need them on a Saturday or Sunday. Um, I don't I think that those people should be allowed uh, that time and a half. Now that that would be again would be up to the dispatch or to the dispatcher's director or supervisor, whoever that may be. But I think you should leave that caveat in there. Uh, but otherwise, um, I think all that language uh, should be struck from that first paragraph A. And then just lastly on the section, the next section where it says this section shall not preclude. Um, the only suggestion I have is that second sentence where it says this section is intended to eliminate, you know, kind of thing, that that part, that last part. I don't know that we need to talk about why a section is intended. I mean, every section is intended for some reason, and we don't say that in every section, but um, that's not something that would hold me up. That's all I have for consideration. And that would be on, Q, on the sixth paragraph and then respectively also on the Q2 a section because they're basically mirrored. Okay, now I'm confused because the example that you gave with the employee who's on vacation and is required to come in on Saturday or requested to come in on Saturday, mm -hmm. and you would want those hours into those overtime hours, but isn't that isn't that Saturday? Don't we have premium pay or some kind of other compensation? We talked a lot about that at that mm -hmm. at the meeting a month ago. Mm -hmm. That um, go ahead. I was just going to say I would think it would depend on um, how they are, if they are asked to come into work or if they are mandated back into work. I don't know those particulars. If dispatch has that, um, I know like. Fire has mandatory callback, you know, under certain circumstances. Um, and, and I suggest this not because, um, I suggest this because we are severely understaffed. And you call, I, I would think as a paramedic, when I worked as a paramedic, if I was off all week on vacation and then you called and said, hey, we could really, you know, use you to come in. Can you come in, you know, for 24 or 12 shift, whatever. I'd be like, well, you really need me and my 40 hours I spent on vacation. I didn't know you were going to need me, but you clearly need me because you're understaffed. You need to staff a rig or staff a seat in the dispatch. I think you would pay time and a half for that. If you're mandating me back in, then I believe there's other rules for that, and that would have to be asked of if I don't know what mandated 
fallbacks are. There is a complete different section on standby and that type of thing. There is. And, and we don't disagree with anything that you're saying. What we disagree with is calling it overtime because is what what is what calling are, it overtime. Calling it overtime. because overtime means you have worked 40 hours and now you're being asked to work more. That is the FLSA definition and the reason for for overtime. We have all of those things: emergency call out, call back. Uh, you know, and those those are there. They they're paid at time and a half, premium pay. We are not at all opposed to that, and we've we never have been opposed to that. Okay. So, okay, but we we are opposed to calling it overtime because it's not overtime. I agree with that. If somebody's been on forty hours of vacation, that is not overtime. Right. It's emergency call in or call back or whatever we want to call it. And that is covered under. Uh, uh -huh. And it's paid at time and a half. It's paid at the same rate, but it's not overtime. And is that defined in that premium pay? I was going to look here. The, there's no definition. Sixteen. There's no definition in the definition section of overtime, and um, I would say that I'm I'm not referring to um, the, you know, like the technical um, what you put on your pay card, you know, like thing. I'm talking what hours count towards overtime. So the 40 that was PTO should count if if you if you you ask somebody to come back in. It's mandated. It sounds like it's, a, you know, I think it's two hours and you come in and if you come in and it's more than that, you get paid for more or whatever, at least two hours of work minimum, whatever. So it's standby but if you're asked, so you ask somebody to come back in to work and they're not covered by a bargaining agreement and you say, we're not going to count towards your overtime those 40 hours. And that's what I'm And we wouldn't to. count those as overtime towards overtime because it's not mm -hmm. overtime. It would be emergency call in or premium pay. It it's not I overtime. Agree. Yeah. Which I would agree with only except that Miss Hayes, when she spoke last week, said there are times that she's asked to come in and she's also had times when she's worked her 40 hour week in the first three so days. So it would be year. coded as premium pay, just not overtime. And she gets paid the exact same thing. And this policy is not intended for people like that. To not get overtime or to get premium pay, that that's not what we're or a water main break. That that's not what this yeah, policy. Yeah, and that's not. What, yeah, I, yeah, and I'm not referring to yeah. that piece. I'm referring to hey, we've got three people on the floor right. and we need four. Right. But so, if you don't come in, we're not mandating you to come in. We're asking you, can you come in and work? And they say, I don't know. Are you going to pay me time and a half? And we would. Yes. In that scenario, we would. Yes. But we just, we wouldn't. We could. I mean, that if that's what we want to do with, yes. Yeah. But we wouldn't call it overtime. No, it's because not. Overtime. Is overtime. Different. Yeah. I, right. We have to be, we have to start being very clear about what overtime I is. I agree. Then I, I think, think we need to take a step back and find and make a definition for the policies and procedures that defines what overtime is explicitly. That's what we're trying to do. This is what overtime is. We might want to look at what emergency call out is or what premium pay is, but that is what overtime is. Is when you work more than 40 hours a week. That's right. what overtime. Is. So I have here with what we're saying on record that if Miss Hayes has already put in 40 hours. Or, I'm sorry, if she took if she took PTO time Monday through Friday and was asked to come in on Saturday and she would have the right to say yes or no. That if she comes in, she will be paid a time and a half. That's the assurance I need yeah, to, or we need to clarify. It would be up language. to the department yeah. whether they consider that emergency each, or. I mean, we have I don't know, 10 different departments in this city. Each have different business needs and demands and what an emergency is and what yeah. is. So a lot of these are guided by specific policies by department for uh, if they call that an emergency for, call for, and di then, for yes. dispatching. If there are three people and they need four and they ask a non a non exempt person to come in that's not covered in agreement, that probably is going to be a departmental policy. 
you know that and that should be a departmental policy it should not be an umbrella policy that is in the personnel manual i agree our department should be allowed to have different policies that directly impact their operations yeah so, so what policy was miss hayes referring or not referring to where she when she stated that are we stating that she was incorrect i'm not saying she was incorrect or correct I th and i think it's very dangerous to isolate one employee or one department i think we need to focus on this policy right here the overtime policy okay then. if if she has or any employee has a an issue with how their what their department policies are especially if they're not covered under a bargaining agreement they may need to talk to their department director yeah. or their supervisor and address those concerns yeah. and work out a solution yeah that's how we that's how we do things outside of a bargaining I like it. outside of a bargaining agreement i would expect that it would be in here um our departments have a great deal of, of operating procedures and policies that that directly relate to how they operate we have them in ipl for our superintendents and people that aren't covered under bargaining agreement we have specific policies for them the police department i'm sure has their own policies for uh people aren't covered under their bargaining agreement so if for, like. if, so for instance if an ipl supervisor um has this same issue there would be there is a policy through ipl that states if you've been off for 40 hours and we ask you to come back in and i'm again i'm not talking it doesn't matter if they've okay. been off or not uh, it, it addresses emergency callback, yeah. premium pay, all of those things. So we, we and what defines that? And I, I'm not going to say specifically we have a policy that talks about, you know, someone coming in for we have emergency call out policies specific for IPO. You know, we have different procedures for them that we would have for dispatching that we would have for the water department, parks and rec, parks and rec. street so department. They all have their own because they have different operational and business mm -hmm. needs. You know, an emergency uh, in IPL is different than an emergency in uh, a department where there's not a threat of, you know, to the health and welfare of mm -hmm. the city. Well, that's not an emergency then. Yeah. yeah right. I mean. So we handle that differently. OK. Um, so then um, to your point of we don't need to address individual departments directly then, um, then I think that also supports the idea that these these two things regarding fire and uh, law enforcement should be struck from the language. Um, since we're not going to mention individual departments, we shouldn't mention them either. Yeah, actually, um, that was what I was going to recommend if no one brought it up is that we're uh, we should we're fine with removing those uh, specific references. Not an issue for us. I think we taught, we said that at the last meeting too. So I, I might have might have gotten lost point. in the chatter at that meeting, but that's what we said. Yeah. Okay, so we're in agreement then that the we will set the unless otherwise provided. We'll put that back in. I'm sorry, where are you? So the section six A. Top sentence. Eight. Okay, you're on the second page. Yeah, because so the first one is kind we of. We are we are fine with the removing in six A. She wants to. Um, well, I, no, we're not we're not okay with the strike out at the top, but the bottom the double underline. Yeah. Yeah, we're fine with that. In the first paragraph and the second paragraph. Six A. Um, the second paragraph for B. No, because that's covered under a bargaining agreement. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Sticking under six A, mm -hmm. the first paragraph. We're going to strike the double language, the double underline. Yes. Sorry. Yep. OK, and then leave otherwise as is. Then the second paragraph of A where it says this section shall not preclude. Um, I I don't have a problem with that first sentence of the second mm -hmm. paragraph, but then when we talk, this section is intended to eliminate any blah, 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 pay for hours outside. Um, again, we t every every one of the things that we mm -hmm. put in place has there's an intended. Yeah. Intention. So I don't know why we would intention. Why we put in here what our intention is. We don't put that in every other change. Well, I think it's an. I think it's important language here, it, yeah. um, and it speaks directly to the specific uh, employees' concerns that you'd mentioned before. This section is intended to eliminate any practice or provision that automatically pays overtime or premium pay for work hours worked outside employee's schedule if the employee has not actually worked the requisite hours during the pay period required to qualify for overtime. Yeah, yeah. and then it will be up to the department to determine yeah. what is not all, automatic. Is not right. all covered yeah. by that paragraph A? I think, this, paragraph? Helps. I think yeah. this helps keep things clear. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Okay. I'm not opposed to that then. 
And then we would again on the in section Q um, after um, at the end of, I guess, except uh, that employees working, there. except that employees yeah. from except that employees to the um, the remainder of that sentence, all the double yeah, underlined except in the first for um, we wouldn't want to remove for the purposes of this subsection holidays unless the board doesn't want us to count holidays. No, we time. totally want to count okay. holidays so then, in there. Yes. So um, yeah, that's our recommendation. So uh, that last sentence would have to remain in there, but everything between um, except that to the end of that, to the period, we, we're very we're supportive of removing that. That's fine with us. We have no issues. And I'm sorry if that wasn't clear at the last meeting, but that's that was what we said. OK, I'm confused about what we're striking. OK, can I can I mark up in here? Can I do you mind if I mark up yours and I'll and I'll. All right. It's your initial word. All right. <laughs> yeah, do that and then pass it on. Yeah. Yeah, so Thank I you. will. In the motion. Thumbs up. From here to. Here. So this is what we're we're fine with this being removed all the way to there and then leaving this this last sentence in. So okay. we're, we're fine with that. And the same on the oh that's on okay. the that's okay. Oh sorry. Can I look on your shoulders? Yeah. Uh, I'm all clear. Yeah. Pass it around. Yeah, look, yeah, you pass it to we'll pass, pass it around. Four yeah. and all just in here. Yeah. Change your things that we're mm -hmm. just see what we're striking there. There's a we will take out. I do not have Yes, yes. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. got it. Yeah. 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 Okay, I'm I feel comfortable with this page um, and then the same would be struck as we talked about on on the 6A one now. Um, yeah, and 6B we already took out because that's again reference to it in the department and that's already crossed out. So very good. And then with those Scrivener type changes. Uh, I agree. Okay. Anything else for? Nothing for me. Kendra, anything? I'm good. Well, we know that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are we ready for a motion or? Um. I would love to have a motion. What kind of motion do you want to make? Well, I would have, I would suggest that we adopt what we've talked about and, and you know, all the things that have, everybody has added something to. I don't know whether we can put that in, in some kind of a format, Jennifer, in terms of coming up with this policy with all these suggestions. If we can, if we can. Well, this is the, I mean, yeah, this, this is directly from the policy. This is the language. I mean, so with, it would with say, the suggestions that we've made. Right. <laughs> so you're changing of the, like the four to five and all of those things. Yes, we agree. So this section, the first one would say a period overtime pay, and it would say all non-exempt employees working in excess of 40 hours per week shall be compensated at the rate of one and one half times their regular hour hourly rate of pay for the purpose of this subsection when calculating total hours per week period holidays not work but paid via holiday pay are included all other hours paid but not actually worked are excluded and then this section shall not preclude provisions establishing premium pay for hours worked on hot okay. Good. and then in six <clears throat> The double 
except that employees working in law enforcement or fire suppression that is removed. And then everything else. And then everything there. else as is drafted here would stay, stay as drafted. And then right. after the word holidays, we would add Article 4, the section that it's referring to, right? Isn't that I would suggest, I would just suggest that because we don't define holidays anywhere like holidays as defined by, like, I just would add that, but I don't think it's a big, not I, paying I'm up. okay with that actually. <laughs> um, and so we have, um, We'll make sure the holiday thing was this was the same, you know, given that we have special work schedules and over time. Okay. Motion Ron, that went over my head. Well, it, to, to accept what we are talking about oh. and put it in some kind of a reasonable format, adding the minor changes. So basically, uh, moving forward with what Jennifer just read and exactly. changes just read. Exactly. All right. Second. Hey, I, I have a discussion point. Um, I assume we do not, um, if we're, because we are now making changes substantially again, typically we would have another public hearing, though I think that we've heard from everybody and we've incorporated what they said. So um, before I would vote on that motion, I would make a motion um, that we suspend the rules of orders for having a public hearing again uh, to go ahead and make this motion at this recommendation to the city council. I would be against that. That's just, just more bureaucratic government nonsense. Everybody had an opportunity to present so you, their presentation. We had a full house of 150 people. Everybody had an opportunity. And and I, I think sometimes sometimes you just have to make a decision. I, I don't know if you heard what I said, Ron. I said I, I don't make, think we need another public hearing. No, I, that's I mean, this we, is what I said. That's what yeah, he just said. Yeah. I said I make a motion yeah. that we suspend the rules of orders to go ahead without another public without, hearing. Okay, I didn't hear yeah. the word. Make a, then take the recommended change and then follow to your motion. But my motion's on the table for not having another public hearing, which would be a suspension of the rules. Well, I have a second to that motion. Right. Second. So all in favor of that motion? Aye. 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 Okay. Now we'll go back to Ron's motion. Yes. That we don't ask me to repeat it all. <laughs> he seconded it. So. Uh, about, yeah, Ron, uh, Ron, here's what I have that uh, your motion was to adopt the resolution with agreed upon changes. Correct. Okay. Correct. And Carl seconded that. Oh, we had a second to that. Carl yeah. did second that. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. So there's all, all in favor of that. Aye. 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 Got it. Everybody happy? Thanks. Smiles. So be happy. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we don't have to worry about that. But you're, you're happy. I'm fine. Thank you. Where's your smile today? <laughs> it's a tough day already. I got family emergency issues in Nebraska, so I'm just waiting for us to get through this meeting so I can talk. I'm ready to move on. Thank you. Okay, we're moving on. We have new business. The new business is personal board appointments. Okay, so little did I know there was a resolution that was passed, I think in 2021. I found it here somewhere that recommendations for reappointments are made by the board. Yes. Can you please provide us a copy of that? Um, yes. I think I have it here. If I, not, I know that you do, right? I don't recall the discussion. I don't, if it's in minutes or something, if you could provide those to us. I didn't have anything ahead of time to read what this um, issue was about. No, I didn't either. So, 
Um, here it is right here. So this is the resolution that was passed by the city council in July of 2021. And the resolution, um, What's the number of it, just so I can make note? Or you'll be able to provide a copy? 256. You'll be providing a copy to us for consideration okay. for the next meeting? Okay. I can't do that. Yeah. The resolution disbanded. You may remember that we went through an interview process with the council or a member or a couple members of the council. So they've disbanded that interview process. And instead, they replace it with um, they disbanded the council interview committee. And they replace it that the board, this board, would recommend reappointments or not. So directly to the council? Is that what it states? Um Um, you guys have copies of that by chance? You can. I don't have copies of it. I'll read it to you. Would that be helpful? Yeah, it would actually be helpful if we could have it presented for the next meeting and consideration and that kind of thing. Because I, I haven't had time to look at this. It wasn't attached to anything. Well, let's just talk it out. Okay. Because we've got two reappointments, yours and mine. Mm -hmm. Um, that the board either needs to recommend or not recommend. I, I guess I've not heard of this. I, I didn't. I didn't recall like PUAB appointments and those type of things were being handled that way. So I'm sorry. Go ahead. Please read it, and we'll then I'll be more educated. Okay. So here is what it says. I'm just going to look at section three. The board because that's. Well, you Maybe you read it all. I mean, would you like her to read the whole thing? Yeah, I'd either like a copy of it if it could be made, or I can yes, uh, read it all. I can email it to you right now. I mean, yeah, right. if everybody can bring it up on their phone to read it, yeah, maybe I'll make a copy. Good luck. I mean, they have a copy machine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so so <laughs> copy. Just one page or whatever it is. Yeah. Hello. She already took it. I, I, I'm, what? Hello. Mm. Mm. I hate those spam calls. Hey, this phone is brand new. I don't even know what it does yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was saying. And they I gave, just got a guest. And they gave me a free watch that don't have a time on the top of it. I'm like, what in the world? <laughs> what kind of watch does it have? To it's a Galaxy something. That's the worst. And I identify with, with him. He said they don't come with no instructions. I open the box. There ain't no directions in the song. I'm going to tell me. No. You push the wrong button and it, it, it does all kind of crazy. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm never giving up my laptop. I seriously thought I turned it off. Just an S22. Galaxy S22. My other one malfunctioned yesterday, yesterday and I took it to AT&T. And they say your phone is malfunctioning. You've got to have a new, you got to get another one. Right. So you just got it. Yeah. So I just got it yesterday and I've only, I've tried to figure this thing out. I'm never, I'm not taking phones. I'm not changing laptops. I'm not unhooking my landline. I didn't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> you make a call phone. Yeah, I, I, I didn't have a choice. This is my house phone. Oh, girl. What did you get? What is, what is it called? It's an S22. It's like an Galaxy Apple Galaxy S22. Essential. It's a brand new one. Yeah. But yeah, my. I need to do one because I. I when 5G starts, my probably is not going to work. Yeah, um, mine malfunctioned and I couldn't even get 5G. I couldn't even get to my phone in it. I couldn't get to my mail in it. Nothing. And it, what was worse was I was out of town. 
And so I was down at the lake and it's like, do you have a phone number? Because it's going to take a couple of hours to transfer all your information. And the only number I knew was my mom's. Jennifer. Mm -hmm. So I had to you, drive back you, to her you, house. You can and say, are you wait. emailing? I can't. Yes, please tell me. You probably don't even know the Eagles if are coming back in, in November. This no. <laughs> You're an Eagles fan, right? No. No. I thought you were. Mm -mm. You, you attended the. No. I went. You, you went to the last concert they were here. Oh, the Eagles. The, the, okay, the group. The groupie. Yeah. No, I didn't know they were coming November back. The, November the 23rd. Oh. Down at the team office. Um, yeah, I went and seen them. Down at oh, I didn't. But that was when they were all still alive. The original group. Oh. Well, they showed a picture of this. Yeah. And and tickets go on sale the 19th of this month, I think. Is it, uh, was it Don, Don, was it Don Henley that passed, or was it uh, one of them passed? I just emailed it, but there's that. Yeah. Oh, boy. I have to figure out how to get to. Oh, okay. Here we go. It's front and back. Just sitting there. Thank front. you. Okay, I got it. There's something front on there. Yeah, it's coming around. Oh, he's coming yeah. around. Yeah. Right here. Zach is just signatures. Okay, so here we go. From the top. Do you want just a few minutes to read through this? Yes, please. Or? Yes, please. Okay, so we'll we'll be silent for a few minutes while. So, okay, I'll look at section three. Do that now. Thank you. Okay, they got it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so this resolution then requires this board to take some action today. Um, specifically, Laura's term and my term are over. We're done. So. <laughs> Uh, I and I think you did also apply for reappointment, mm -hmm. but that has to be recommended or in this resolution by this board. Correct. Okay, so I guess that would be a motion. Would that be right? So they will take recommendations from the yes. Board. Okay. Yeah, and they'll prove. I mean, they're not going. Okay, I would right. not venture to guess what they're going to do. No. Um, well, I think it's pretty straightforward. At any rate, so I think I'm asking the board, the personnel board, to make a recommendation that Laura and I um, be reappointed, but that's up to you all. So let's have some discussion and get some movement on this. That's up to one, two, three, four, five. Correct. Well, that's what I my understanding of reading it. Yeah, I don't know that I can recommend that I would be reappointed. Well, yeah, I understand what you mean. I can recommend that Laura be reappointed. Right. And I would make a recommendation that Teresa be reappointed. Yeah. Discussion. Well, I'll 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 be the first one and you're you're all not gonna like it. Okay. I think this is a horrible, horrible idea. Self-perpetuating boards are basically out of the old Pendergast era of Kansas City. The city council gets elected, and the city council is the one that should be appointing members. They should be having interviews with everybody. 
And when she and I were appointed two years ago, we had to fill out some paperwork with regard to an application. And I know I interviewed three times for the Planning Commission, for the Board of Adjustment, and for this board. So I went through interviews for three different boards. So my records are on, on the, are there. And, you know, you, you know, I just think that everybody should apply for a job. I can't imagine why they would turn people down if they're doing a good job. But to have current boards self-perpetuate themselves, I just, I just think it's a horrible process. And and if you want to run for, if you want to run for election, throw your hat in the ring and run for city council. But you know I'm not going to be on this a year and ten months from now. I've already said that. You know my term's going to be up. I think this board ought to have term limits. And 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 I think the mayor would, the mayor would. I've heard him talk about that for the position of mayor. That we should just not be hanging on forever. Let some new people come in and put their ideas into place. And just to, you know, I, I just I just can't agree with it. I can't vote for it. I've known I've known this lady for 35, 40 years. I I, I personally like her very much. And, and you know, from our time at Children's Mercy and Truman Medical Center. But I just can't vote this this way. The, 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 this. This is wrong. And whether you like Donald Trump or not, this is sort of Trumpism. Uh, and so that's my position on it. So I'll turn it over to my friend Carl. I'm looking at it. Uh, I thank you for allowing me to say something. Anyway, uh, according to this uh, resolution that the City Council has already implemented, it's kind of like already passed a red light. As what? I'm sorry. It's already passed a red light. Like, it, it, this is in place. Yeah. Okay. I, and I understand your 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 uh, passion, your feelings there, yeah. and I concur with some of them. It's already passed a red light. It means this is the procedure. This is the policy that we have to pay, deal with. So uh, I think the next step is to just I think comply, even though. Uh, we have some uh, reluctancy to agree with it. That's the reality of it. so complying with what is uh, what with this policy on this resolution is my responsibility. Okay, that means it's uh, reappointment time for two members of this board, and uh, I will. I will do what I have to do. We'll do what I, I'm here to do, which is uh, vote and uh, make the best choices for the for in this situation for this board. That's what I'm here to do. Okay, in this situation, in about reappointments. Okay, I may not agree with the resolution, but hey, I should have fought that back in uh, 2017. <laughs> I should have said that then. Well, unfortunately, I was well, away. Well, 2021, Madam Chair. Can I speak? Yes, sir. I, I didn't want to interrupt. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, I disagree. We are not perpetuating our own membership in this board. Um, this resolution is a the way I read it here is, is for us to recommend to the city council whether reappointment should be made or not. Those are made then at the choice of uh, by a choice of the city council that is defined by the charter. So they can either take our recommendations and act on them or they cannot. Um, it does not mean that we are perpetuating our own membership by any means. If we think someone is, you know, good and should stay, then we should make that recommendation or otherwise, and then the council will decide what to do. Um, and I don't understand the comment that was that I, I need for clarification is somebody can run for city council. What is that part of what you said related to this? It's just just to say. Yeah, Ron, I, you know, could you explain? I'm, I'm, I, I didn't understand the comment well, something about somebody can run for city council. Well, I mean, if the if they if they want the authority and power People ought to put their name in 
and run for city council. And, I, you know, the longer people are on boards, the more power they seem to want to generate to themselves. And, and my feeling is anytime you're on a volunteer board, we have two constituencies. The number one is the citizens, the other fellow taxpayers, and the two in this particular board to the employees and the retirees to do the best you can for okay. those constituencies. And, uh, you know, and that, 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 you know, that's just my feeling. And I'm sorry. It, so the it, point about running for city council really well, I would encourage anybody to run for city council. Okay, so that's a separate, that's yeah, a comment right. about running. You know, okay, very we good. We talked that about talked about that before a few years ago. You know, yeah, like I, I think, do I think run we for do. City council. Remember when I when I said that? Mm -hmm. You know, I I think we all understand. We all know what the underlying issue is here. The comments that were made in in emails um, uh, regarding power and someone running for city council. Um, no, what I mean, you know, since you brought that up, I. I was concerned about the way that the last meeting was handled, uh, and 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 three, the majority of us had other obligations. I had a medical appointment. This plan works. She had some things. I was very unhappy with how that was changed. Right. And, mean, I'm gonna... and you would take that up with the chair, then, correct? Yeah. We'll... Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. You think it's a personnel board discussion? Yeah. We don't have the ability to meet an executive session. We are a public board, so whatever needs to be discussed is right here. And, you know, to the point of if you're concerned that how long someone's been on a board and whether that causes issues on their need for want for power, um, can we go around the room and see how many how many years have each of us served? I've served, I think, about six, maybe. Four. Me or you? You've served four? Two terms. That's eight. Fourteen. I've served 25. <laughs> 16, probably. Yeah. 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 I've been probably 14, 15. Mm -hmm. But I have no desire to have power. None whatsoever. Been a boss for many, many years, and I don't want to be the boss no more. Other yeah, than that, my own home. Yeah, and I don't, um, I don't have any need for power either. I think we should focus on the fact that the personnel board is here to do a job that is defined by the city charter. Um, I believe that people come and bring their ideas in good faith. I think those ideas are considered. The board has a chance to vote whether or not discuss whether or not they like a change or you know suggestion that is made. Um, we expect attendance at this. We have not yet passed the um, rules. The rules, um, which is not on under old business, so I'm a little. I didn't. I just. I think maybe that was accidentally left off on the agenda. So yeah. So we haven't defined those, um, but um, part of those those state that you know we have attendance requirements. Um, and there are, of course, exceptions to attendance requirements. Um, there are reasons people have to be out. I understand that. Um, but, um, but that hasn't been adopted yet, has it? No. no. Okay. No, it is not. Um, so. Right. So I was, I was going to say you, you can go into executive session, but you have to notice it properly for that. And then you'd have to figure out what. Um, you know, exception. under what basis? So, for, for what it's worth. Well, I think a lot of this, when we get to the rules, I think it'll be clarified. Okay. And we can begin to implement some of that. That's what I was going to, I don't know if anybody else agrees with me. I, I would like to make a motion that we go into, uh, and just hold that each other rules is, is addressed and then uh, go forward with the, uh, the resolution of uh, six seven one two. Okay. I, I mean, in order for okay. me, I don't know. Okay. Right. The rules should. Yeah, I don't know. I'm always wrong. I think the rules right. should be in play in in place. Because that's okay. Right. I'm wrong. Yeah. So uh, we didn't add the rules to the agenda because we were a bit concerned that we would need more time 
on the overtime resolution. We were able to get to that. I am very pleased with what we did today on the overtime resolution. So we were able to get to that. I think we can add now to the agenda. I need to go back to what we're talking about. Um, Andrew, I want to give you an opportunity to talk about um, the reappointment issue that we're, that we're discussing. Oh, okay. Is this making sense? Am I sure, Debbie? Yeah, you're making sense. Thank you. I understand I'm what old. you were saying. Thank you. But um, go ahead. No, I, I, I don't have a problem with doing what I was, what I'm here to do, and that's to make the res. You know, I may not like the resolution. Yeah, yeah, but, we don't have to like it or dislike it. Yeah, that's but it's already about. in place, so yeah, I've got exactly. to go by what the resolution. Yeah, that's what Carl was saying. Yeah, and but, so I don't have. Yeah. I, I, you know, I don't want to interrupt you. No, go ahead. I don't know, our attorney. I mean, the gentleman over here encouraged me to follow strictly the the city charter. Mm -hmm. and I wonder if this is in violation of the city charter because okay. it very clearly states how personnel board members are appointed on overlapping terms, five members, and I don't can't recall the section exactly. And I just wonder, I mean, you know, I wonder if this resolution really is holds muster in terms of being. Well, the way I interpret this is it's it's now the council saying you board give us give us recommendations right. instead of us trying to point, you know, point certain people. You give us recommendations yeah. of who you think will be good on your board. Yes. Yeah. Then we will make the appointments. Yes. Yeah. All right. That's they the way still, I think it still abides by the charter. It's just a matter of okay. now they're instead of them going out and doing yeah. it the way they used to, now they're asking, please give us some suggestions yeah. on people who would. That's the way I did. That's perfect. Yeah. So I could recommend that Teresa hold the chair for another 25 years. Oh, <laughs> no, no. It's hypothetical. I do have the charter if you want me to read it about the membership. I mean, it, it really doesn't say. How, it just says there shall be a personnel board with um, five members appointed by the council for four year terms and shall overlap. Upon expiration dates of terms of original appointment. Nice. It doesn't really say any specific. Uh, I'm, I'm, just used, I'm just used to how yeah. we've done it yeah. all along. Yeah. 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 If not, thank you. Which is how you're saying to how we've done it all along is the city council just makes their own decision. Sure. Right. right. So now, unfortunately, and, and up until we have two years ready. ago, when she and I were appointed, that's how it was done. And Yes, I would but unfortunately, we have a resolution now that we have to comply mm -hmm. with. Whether that's correct, and again, I would agree with Ms. Fair that that this is making us making a recommendation to the council as we do on other basically everything else that we do, right. and then they decide who they want, and that's the part of the charter, right? Yeah. Okay then. Where are we? I mean, I know we're on planet Earth, but other than that. I suppose we need a motion. That be right. We have two seats, so I don't know if you someone wants to make a recommendation for who to fill those two seats. We could take all those. Anyone who wants to suggest a person to fill the seats, uh, we could do this a couple different ways. We could have that list of people and then vote on each person or. Or take, you know, seat one first and then do seat two. So. What do you thought? Yes. Hmm. How many applications were turned in to fill the seats that expired on June 30th? Two. Mm -hmm. Two. Oh, Tara, no. Teresa and I turned in. Okay. Yeah. It was required by May 26th. I don't guess that. 
I thought there were three that had experienced injuries. And there was you two, and then and there was a younger gentleman that um, was in that was in that group. And if that's that. not somebody that we all know and their in their qualifications, you know, I guess we would need to see the application to just I'm, I'm not I don't. If it's somebody I don't know, I wouldn't make a recommendation one way or another on somebody if I don't know Agreed. what is stated in their application. Who is, yes. and I don't know that their application is yeah. considered available for all to see. Yes, or not. but when I was appointed to the board, uh, who, you know, I, I couldn't tell you how long ago it was, but I didn't know anybody on on the yeah, personnel board. I agree with that. Didn't know any of them. But we didn't have to make recommendations then. Correct. Yeah, that's well, I mean, I don't know what 20 yeah. years ago it was. I wasn't yeah. here. Right. The city council has changed numerous times. Numerous they, times. They did have an interview committee. They did, then they did, and now they don't again. Um, there's four. There's four, including, including. Okay. okay. So then, so, yeah. um, without being supplied that inf information, or you know, at this meeting, I would make a motion to table this conversation for uh, for the next regularly scheduled meeting, pending further information regarding applicants. Yeah, I'll second that. Voted as as postponed to the next meeting to table. The correct wording, whatever yeah. it is, yes, please. Mm -hmm. I'll second that. Well, do we know that we can get those other applications? Uh, because yeah. are we even allowed to see those applications? Yeah. Who the heck are these outlaws? Yeah, I think we would have to be able to provide these. If you're ultimately making the recommendation of the city council, I think we have to be able to provide these to you somehow. Um, yeah, um, and then I got all this from the city clerk, so I I would like to be able to go back to her and just yeah. try to clarify how. That's great. Mm -hmm. Is that Becky somebody wrote? Yeah, city Becky Barons. Barons yeah. yeah, Becky Barons. Okay. Mm -hmm. So would you be so doing that then? For the, do I do that or is Tracy? Do that? We'll, we'll do that. Um, we'll, we'll go back to the city clerk and see how we provide this information. Right. Um, right. And then have a good discussion what under what kind of structure we should we should do that. In. Oh, that's great. But you're right. There has to be a way for this group to discuss all four applications. Yeah. Right. And in a in a way that you make an informed decision. So. Yeah. Um, We'll figure out how that works. Right. So we have a motion on the table that's been seconded. Yes. That we've post postponed. Postponed to the next meeting. Yeah. Next regular meeting. Okay. So all in favor of that motion. Aye. 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 Right. Okay. Good. Oh, it's almost been overtime. Mm -hmm. I'm not interested. Move and proceed. that. Sorry. Tell me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yes. No kidding. Say <laughs> that again. Let's say you're a volunteer, you can't be on overtime. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Is that hours worked? Yeah, Using procedures. Okay, so if um well it's not on the agenda, so we have that's something that we'll we'll bring to the next meeting. The rules and procedures are right, because we don't have that on the agenda. Can we because add it to the agenda? We have, so not, have until we accept these, not until we accept these rules, which state that items can be added to the agenda. Added a resolution. Yeah, I mean, technically you can. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, this, under Robert's rules, we can we can make a motion to add it to the agenda. I make a motion to add it to the agenda for discussion today. The rules and procedures. Hey, can I have a second on that? Can I have a second on that? Second. Thank you, Carl. And all in favor, aye. Aye. Two double or Say I to everybody. OK, good. OK, so um, let's go to the rules and procedures. Everybody have a copy of that? Yes. And it, OK, great. Is this exciting or what? Mm -hmm. Let me after all. OK, rules and procedures. Um, or I know that you've read this. You've made some yeah. suggestions for changes. Yeah. Um, so we just start with that. Sort of a 
rules and procedures and give Laura the floor for a few minutes. She can thank you. Talk us through our the changes. So is everybody got a copy? Yes. Okay. Let's go. Laura. First of all, I appreciate that the red line copy that we that I provided last time looks like a lot of that was all taken into account. So most of my things are very small here. Yeah. Um on section one, um, very small thing. I would add at the end, at the end of after the word Missouri, the hereafter charter so we don't have to continue to say the charter of the city of independence missouri every time i like that simple um down on number five um the i would make a motion or would suggest that we strike officer elections shall be held biannually uh, because it says they will have two terms so i don't know if we have to say we'll have it biannually but and i'm not sure that that's not actually by Biannually instead of biannually, but I would just move to strike that sentence. And obviously, if there's two years time, you're going to have to have elections. I'm good. Okay. Um, then there, just this is just a thing between section five and six. There's a space there missing. Um, I'm sorry, is that funny? I don't understand. I don't understand. Who's laughing? Oh, I don't understand the reaction. I'm sorry. You don't have to understand. Okay, I will proceed. Thank you. Number six, um, I would suggest um, at the there's a comma in the middle of that sentence that is inappropriately placed that I would delete. And then again, in the sentence with of the charter, because we've now defined that above. So you would take out the city of Independence, Missouri to not have to repeat that. And that would go again on section seven, not having to repeat that. Right. Section eight, um, the board shall have the right to make recommendations or to be heard on the, I would change personnel rules to personnel policies and procedures because that's why we refer yep. to them all the time. Right. Uh, section nine, um, we had this situation come up, so I was asking that the language be added again after where it says three days before the meeting then add the phrase or at the same time such items are emailed to the employees of the city if sooner. Article two, number one, regular meetings of the board shall be held at least quarterly, which I believe is what we were able to discuss at the last meeting that was recommended by Mr. Cover. Paragraph two, I would take out meeting notice, although that doesn't matter, just we don't preface each one of the sections, but whatever's fine. Um, and I would remove the word tentative agenda. It's the time, date, and place, and agenda of each meeting shall pre be provided uh, to the clerk for posting. It wouldn't be the tentative agenda, it would be the agenda. And is it, are you assuming that the agenda is the agenda until the meeting starts? That's why the word tentative is unnecessary. The tentative agenda to me sounds like, well, maybe we'll do this agenda or not. I, I don't think it's. Or maybe that's, that's really what's in the. the the state statute, the sunshine law, that's how it is is phrased and they say okay. tentative because if, if, if it is and if it's state law, yep, absolutely. I mean, like we did today, we added an item to the agenda. It wasn't on there, but we added this. So that's I I think we probably should leave it. Okay. Okay. We'll leave it. Um number eight at the bottom of the page in the first sentence, there's a comma after the meeting presider, which is inappropriate to be there for grammar purposes. Yeah. Next page, Article 4, Paragraph 2, second line down, again, an inappropriate comment. Right. Comma. Last page, I'll go from the bottom up. Um, Article 6, uh, records. There's an additional space between the and records for some reason. Again, not a big deal, but it's there. Um, on above that, so that would be Article 5, Paragraph 3, I move to strike. In order to speak at a meeting, individuals must make a request to the staff liaison two business days before the meeting at which he or she needs to speak. We've allowed people to speak, um, you know, without giving two days notice. Um, if people are in agreement with that, I won't further discuss why I think that would be appropriate to take that out. But I can't if people don't agree to that. 
Um, and then above that in section G, if applicable consideration of motion to convene in closed session under uh, RSMO section 610. We, you know, you just can't refer to section 610.010 and not tell what section that comes from because it comes from the revised Missouri no, statutes. I would suggest Correct? though leaving hiring, firing, discipline, or promoting a particular employee is because not all personnel matters can go into closed session. So the only well, I haven't gotten to that part. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was, yeah. Well, I'm just letting, going ahead. I thought I'd catch you. I, you know, uh -huh. while we're discussing that section. So well, I think yeah, that should be. Yeah. So right. yeah. I okay. think that's, you know, we should leave it because that is following the state statute. Okay, okay, so then if so, so I asked for the RSMO to be added and headed that that's. You agree that? Yes. OK, I, so I, that I was the thing about. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. the point I was on. OK, yes. so then um, if when we say legal matters and then but then we can't say personnel matters. Um, because I looked to the city council where they have the section that says, you know, council will go into executive session, you know, for these, these and these and legal. It doesn't just say legal matters. It says blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, OK, well, then when we go to section three here and we say all these things, why can't we just say personnel matters? But um, in the end, I don't care. End, it's, it's it's personnel matters. I think we leave it as my suggestion. Yeah, and it's okay. it's all personnel matters. So yes, I'm fine with that then. Those are my suggested changes. Awesome. Yep. Would they need to enter closed session? Is that the same thing as executive session? It like is. To say matters of the board? But is that where they would put that? Or um, just like on the council agenda, it would say the the count the council is going to schedule an executive session for 5 15 p.m. to discuss matters pertaining to RSMO section 610.0 whatever related to legal matters and personal matters or whatever the phrase is. So language I think would just get something off of what the council uses because I'm sure Becky's that you know when it comes up I will help you with the, with that how that should look on the agenda but yes. Yeah. yeah. Comment. If, if no one else had any comments, just uh, there was. <clears throat> I was trying to keep up. There was a requested change in. Um, is it nine? Yes. Um, Article one nine. Where was the speaker? Right yeah. yeah. Um, three under Article Five. Last page. Last page. Um, you know, I guess what I would say is just because it has been something that has been done doesn't necessarily mean it's a good idea or good practice, um, and that doesn't obligate us to doing anything in the future. Mm -hmm. um, there needs to be some system or order, in my view, on how people come to speak to this group. Um, quite honestly, in the past, it mm -hmm. um, seemed a little bit impromptu, a little bit out of control at some points, and there needs to be an order to that, in my view. If someone wants to speak, they need to sign up and speak, just like we do at council meetings. If people go to the planning commission, they're allowed, you know, they need to sign up many times um so i just think there needs this is, it works for the puab this is directly from this actually is less time much less time than what is required in the puab bylaws so i would just point that out that i would you know especially for us if we uh you know when you have speakers that come up and we're we don't know what the topic is um you know that allows us some time to kind of prepare uh to be able to have a well-informed, educated conversation about whatever is being brought up as a concern. So that's all I would say about that part. Hmm. And I would have a comment. Go ahead. Um, I understand. I, in fact, I recommended several several months ago um, that we actually decide whether people speak at the beginning of the meeting or at the end of the meeting yeah. or at a period in, in the middle um, as consistent with, with the way the council ha handles it. Um, and I also think that it is appropriate for us to um hello <laughs> we don't have to turn it off i'm sorry i think that's right yeah. we'll, 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 so floor 
I got to get a new one one day too. So. You're talking, Caroline. So um, I would uh, then recommend to change that language to mirror what the city council does, which is um, immediate allows up to signing up to speak up until the night of the agenda or the night of the meeting when there's actually a form that you can fill out to say I'm Laura Dominic and I want to speak at tonight's meeting and then we turn those into the chair. Oh, so um, and as far as someone who you might have to come up, you know, like you might think there might be another topic that needs to be discussed that you wouldn't have time to review. Um, I think we would handle that just like the city council. Um, you know, like you could either say, I'm sorry, that's off topic. We're not discussing building a new police building or something, whatever that might be. So you would keep them on topic. Um, if they turned in a topic that was off base from the current discussion, then either you would say, I'm sorry, we're not going to allow you to speak because you are you do have that discretion in here. Um, and then uh, if it's something that does need to be addressed but needs further research, then we can say. I'd like to make a motion to add that to agenda at the next round we schedule meeting mm -hmm. for discussion. Two days in advance is. Um, that's. That's there's that's too limiting. Um, the council does it immediately before the meeting, so. Other comments, thoughts, consideration of what we're talking about. Anybody have a good joke? Oh, yes. <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm with him on this. Two business days. If somebody wants to talk, um, you know, and and they have something because other than the policies and the procedures and going over the sunshine laws, it's normally personnel matters that we're meeting on that. Correct. And I say that if somebody has some, if they have a witness that wants to speak, then they should have sign up two days ahead of time that way the city attorneys has you know whatever evidence that this person is going to present then the city has has time to do their research on this so i think that two business days is more than that's adequate time generous i would. so i i would say leave it in just the way it's printed I would then with with that comment in mind, I would say two business days for items pertaining to a when we meet to discuss a person versus regularly scheduled meetings. And obviously public hearings, anybody can come to speak, so that, yeah. that's not it, but we have three different ways we meet. We have public hearings, we have regularly scheduled meetings, and then we have like this person yeah. has an yeah. issue. Right. I right. would be fine with the two days for this person has an issue. How are I supposed to explain that? Regularly scheduled meetings, I think people should be allowed to sign up um, the morning of the time right before the meeting, and the chair would have time to. We can use that little form that city clerk has. You know, here's your name, here's what you want to discuss, give us a little quick thing, and then you can decide you have the decision to um, who to be heard on. Other thoughts, comments, concerns, um, good jokes. No, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, actually, I agree with everything that Laura said, and um, probably one of the few times. <laughs> but, Stop. but but we're friends, and we and and I think that's the important thing. I think thing we've voted we, together on everything, haven't we? We've we we, voted similarly on everything we voted. That, on. That, that, that we can get along. Pretty well, and I think the you know the importance of a, a committee like this is where we have some strong opinions, strong and and so I don't want people to feel that we're constantly a loggerheads, but I think in probably ninety percent of the cases we're pretty much in agreement with things, and so I don't want to be offensive specifically to you because I do respect your background and your, your comments, and so. Um, I, uh, you know, again, I, I agree with what you said, and so. Um. So where are we? Anybody want to make a motion? Anybody want to tell a good joke? Give a good joke. You're dying for a good joke, aren't you? Something's mm -hmm. <laughs> wrong today. <laughs> if you need to make a motion to accept the changes as discussed, I will make such a motion. On okay. the, go ahead. I'll, I'll agree. I mean, I'll I'm so confused about what language you're going to use in that 
Number three. Which, on yeah, a, so maybe what we I should. have a question yeah. before we make a motion. Shouldn't we then, um, after the two business days before the meet, shouldn't we put in there for, pers for personnel, for yeah. person to put yeah. that in there? So maybe what we should do instead is to postpone or table, whatever the right word is, to get those wording, however that word will change gets made, and then we can vote on these at the at the next meeting. I, I can make that motion or I can, because we want to get it right, and I do like yeah. to see it, but I don't want to um, Check and move is a long delay place. unnecessarily. Let's not delay. Let's get this language the way we want it and move this. We still have time. So then we would say in order to speak at a regularly scheduled personnel board meeting, individuals may request to speak at said meeting up until the meeting begins at the regularly scheduled time, something like that. And then in order to speak at a, I don't know what the phrase is, a a personnel matter. Individuals must make a request to the staff two days before the meeting as she wished as they wish to speak. So there would be two sentences there. One for regular scheduled meetings, you can sign up until the time. And then the second one with when it's an individual personal personnel an employee, personnel. Like yeah, yeah. An employee personnel, personnel matter. matter. There you go. That's the word. Are we all in agreement to that? So we've got two different time schedules. I'm in agreement with that. Obviously, I guess I said, sorry. You made the motion, correct? Yes, I did. So I it, second that motion. OK, and the motion is that we have these two different time schedules. One the, is up until the time that the meeting starts. Not the form. You can speak. The other is on a personnel issue. Yeah. Two days before. Right, two business days, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my suggested changes. My motion then was to adopt, mm. approve these personal board rules and procedures uh, with the given suggested changes or whatever that brings. That's my motion. Okay, we have a second to that already? Yeah, I second. I've lost track. Okay, so then. Just to make sure, so Kendra, you're good with the changes. That, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Yes. So I'm gonna make sure we're talking about the whole document, not just that one paragraph. Or right. Something. My motion right. is to the yeah. whole document. Yeah. But but I should also say, if there's anybody else, I know you had some things you want to talk about, so right. I don't want to jump the gun on that. If there's right. Other people. Okay. Right. I agree. So is there any other any further discussion on the um, rules of procedure before we file before we vote? Thank you. Any other discussion? We're all very happy with this. Why well, see smiles? I've got I only have one question. Go ahead. It just says five members. Why well, why is I guess my question is why is it only just five members? What's well, the that? Charter says, right? It's defined by charter. The charter says the charter decided, mm -hmm. yeah. okay, we're gonna have a board. And this is how many members yeah. we're going to have on this board. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. that's it. We're not yeah. going to have six. We're not going to have seven. No. We're just going to have five. five. OK. That, that was just <laughs> yeah. no. my question. Yeah, we don't know why they stopped at five. Yeah. 25 would be fine, but five is good. OK. OK, so we're back to the motion. It may have been seconded. Vote. So we're ready for vote. Vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, man. Guys are awesome. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, I have three things. Uh, I guess since we approved this, we're going to do quarterly meetings, and that would be our next meeting would be the second Friday in October, if I'm reading this right. This would be the next quarter. The uh, second item would be, what if we should get a big COVID splurge as we enter into the holidays? 
I'd like to learn how that we could participate in the board meetings from home. And I don't know how to do that because I'm a dummy with regard to all this electronics. Zoom. I don't understand Zoom. So is there somebody we can have explain that to us? How you go about it? I've never done Zoom or Teams or whatever yeah. it's called. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy to address that. Uh, we currently have one board that meets exclusively via Microsoft Teams. That's the platform the city uses. Um, so uh, in the event we get to that point where, you know, something happens again or you all decide one month you want to meet virtually, um, we can we have people that can train you all leading up to that and we'll make sure you have the proper you know the upgrades on your devices to do that so we've we've gone through that we you know we had a fire drill of this a couple of years ago but uh we've gotten pretty good at it now uh and so in the event that ever happens hopefully it doesn't but if it does happen um yeah we have we can get you all up to speed I like quickly. that i really think that yeah because huh? kendra may have something going on but she can't make it and she can we can now uh, I can sit do it from the lake middle here there. and be present for any meeting. Or I I'll could come be sitting at a doctor's office. Hey, we can all teams in from your lake. Not, <laughs> don't, don't do that because I'll hold you to it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a lot of friends. Actually, I don't really have any. <laughs> I got kids. You can't have friends and kids, too. <laughs> Amen. Amen to that. <laughs> well, I'm Go ahead. Real quick, I wanted to clarify, Ron, you were saying the next meeting, well, under your bylaws, it says the regular meeting shall be held at least quarterly. Okay. So we, I think we do need to, though, make these appointments. So I really think that you need to at least have a meeting next month. Yeah. And just focus on that. Okay. I mean, it'd be, you know. And when will the ethics policy be ready for a review? It's drafted, but... Um, I, it was incredibly long. I remember that. And so we've not gone down to re, to that, whittle it down a little bit. So if we can get it whittled down by next meeting, by next month, we would love that. We're, present we're, it otherwise. We're also kind of waiting to see what the governing body, no, what, right. kind, of, what, what kind of decided. direction they were, right. they were taking on this. Um, You're right. We got too far ahead of them. Um, but now there's a commission that the mayor uh, I believe is setting up or it's on the agenda to be set up. So uh, I think maybe we can move these along in parallel now uh, and not necessarily. I just didn't want to get ahead. That's, yeah. that's a dangerous thing for people in city management to do to get in front of your city council. No, so, um, I didn't want to do that. I think, I think we're in a safe space where we can work on this in earnest now and, and uh, not jeopardize getting too far ahead of them. So well, that would be great. Plus, didn't we agree a long time, or I should say this this last fall, that we would be doing these monthly because there's so many policies and procedures that need to be updated, and it would take 18 months to go through. You know, if we took, you know, a topic of month, it would take us 18 months. Well, if we met quarterly, you're talking about a couple of years. Mm. And, you know, I myself, you know, uh, not that I don't enjoy seeing all your faces, mm -hmm. but I don't want to be doing policies and procedures for a couple of years, not when we need to hurry up and get these updated for the city. So I I still, yeah, meeting once a month, yeah, some kind of, sometimes, well, I always have to adjust my schedules to around the meetings, but I expect, but um uh, so yeah, I suggest that we keep on meeting monthly rather than quarterly. And you know, the idea of doing it virtually sounds wonderful. Because mm -hmm. for me to come across town, it's 15, 20 minute drive. And even though I'm a volunteer and I don't mind doing it, you know, sometimes it's kind of harrowing trying to drive 23rd Street or Truman Road or whatever to get all the way across from the West End of Independence to East End. So that would just be my suggestion. And I think with the wording that says at least quarterly, then we can do monthly and we can decide every month. Do we need to wait a quarter? You know, like right. now we're saying we do need to make September. Right. I but after that. we get the rules and procedures done, 
That was our assignment. Yeah. Are we pretty close to board. finishing these now? Yeah. It says at least finishing these. Rooms. Right. Where are we at? On Policies rooms? and procedures manual? Yeah. What she's talking about. Yeah. Are we just about done or so are you going to? The way, are there more? So the way we had talked about this a few months ago um, was, and if, I mean, the way, the way I understood it, um, what we proposed was we were going to go basically revise the entire document. First step. Second step, because some of this it does impact in a way our bargaining units go, you know, engage with those with the each one of those bargaining units called the labor coalition, get their feedback, um, and then ultimately come back to you all. So by the time hopefully it comes to you all, a lot of the uh, drafting and the language proposals would be you know, would be um, it would be pretty close to final form before it, when it comes to you all in this form. That was our goal, and that's that's what that's how we've been operating. Mm -hmm. It also kind of allows because these things connect. You know, some of the you know provision here may connect somewhere else. You know, you can't necessarily do all this in just isolation. You you need to. It's a holistic approach. So that was also the intent. So um, you know, this is a priority for us. We have a lot of priorities and, you know, people mention that our public safety staff is, is lean and they are lean, but we are, we are lean everywhere. We are lean in our street maintenance department. We are lean in our human resources department. Uh, there's just one assistant city manager now, not two. So we're lean in my office now. So, um, you know, we, you know, and then emergencies pop up. So I'm not trying to make excuses, but I'm just trying to explain give you context about what you know what we do maybe a little bit and and how we're approaching this project in particular so thank you okay. you're so short-handed we'll, we'll work cheap won't we Teresa? <laughs> <laughs> come on over ron <laughs> yeah. hey one one last thing and you know, uh i've been listening to the city council meetings and i don't know i must have been asleep when we i'm assuming we discussed this and this has to do with the issue of behavior of city council people. And if, say, there's an allegation of inappropriate action by a council member, mm -hmm. there's something out there that says, well, they will be investigated by the chief human resource officer. And then it later will go to the to the personnel board to make a recommendation and maybe yeah. maybe Adam you can so th there's discussion about this but I don't believe anything's been finalized just yet and I believe under the city charter right now um you know th those types of allegations I believe currently go to the board of ethics I okay. I'm gonna have to be dialing back in my way back machine uh I'd even looking for the uh, professor emeritus over there to nod his head but maybe at me so I think that's right well, I, I know the, the one council from the second district, I forget his name. He keeps talking about the the board of personnel or something. Yeah. And, and that's, you're right, there's a conflict there. And I at the, at the policy level, they're trying to sort that out. Okay. Uh, but I don't think that's been finalized just yet. Okay. No, it's not. It's taken yeah. it for further. Yeah, for, so for, there, for the, 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 the issues that you're bringing up, the concerns you're bringing up are the very same kind of concerns that that the governance body's bringing that up. Yeah, I just, yeah, I just would hate for us to interject ourselves mm -hmm. into that, and I think it's unfair to the personnel director uh, because I'm sure she's got a lot of other stuff to do, mm -hmm. and it puts her in an awkward position trying to evaluate somebody a few levels, you know, elected officials, and then it goes to us. Yeah, I just don't see that in the charter. I mean, you know, but. And it actually states, I believe, in the policies and procedures that we that any complaints, uh, you know, say sexual harassment or any of those types of things, they go to for classified service employees. They go to you. Unclassified service is not something that we are attached to, which is why I spoke at two meetings um, regarding that, saying that I did not feel comfortable with the personnel board because one, the statement in a, a you know current document states we can't do that. And second of all, we are appointed by the city council. Therefore, being asked to provide some kind of recommendation as to what to do with a member 
um, if they're out of line um, is a circular argument that I don't think is appropriate. Um, and I have spoken to a couple of council members on that and they're like, yeah, good point. So I don't think that language is going to be there in the final. Yeah, and if it if it doesn't even go to the Board of Ethics, maybe it should be a third party or fact finder or an arbitrator, mm -hmm. somebody city like that, or a special attorney. council. Oh, city attorney. City attorney. But not something else. Yeah, thank you. Anyway, that's all I got. I agree with that. That'd be like spanking your boss. Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. <laughs> perfect scenario. Oh, perfect. Perfect. I'd make a multiple. You want to. Yeah. So um we have a, a motion to adjourn the meeting. Get a second on that. Yeah. Second on that. All right, good job guys. Eleven forty one. Safe travels. Thank you. Appreciate that. Hope everything works out well for you. Over there, but I appreciate that. It's a uh...